quote unquote border czar. Vice President Harris was not a border czar. Meantime, Vice President and border czar Kamala Harris facing some backlash. What he said about Harris and immigration was not true. She was never appointed border czar. Uh, and this will be her first visit to the uh, U.S.-Mexico border region since she was appointed as the border czar by President Biden. People gonna have to counter the misinformation. You already hear folks talking about the border czar. She wasn't the border czar. President Biden tapped Kamala Harris, Vice President Kamala Harris, to be the border czar. Now, she wasn't the border czar. That's what Republicans uh, labeled her. They were very critical of Kamala Harris, especially in her role as border czar. Now what she's up against is folks lying about her border record, calling her a border czar. Kamala Harris, who was appointed as the border czar. The Biden team didn't declare her the border czar. They wanted her to work on kind of the root causes mm -hmm. of immigration. There has been so much criticism against Kamala Harris. You know, she was the, the border czar. Calling her sort of the border czar, uh, which wasn't necessarily the case. So the border, if they weren't planning to address it in a major way, do not make her your border czar. Are. She met with some of the Northern Triangle countries, but nothing has effectively changed. say goodbye so we're gonna have to figure it out well, we'll model through one way or another we'll you know, but so to, uh, to be fair mike yeah uh, i hear that you're having a problem with my boat blue no matter who attitude boat. With, with my girl harris what no i didn't <laughs> <laughs> what about you tom are you, you get upset about my girl kamala or kamala <laughs> la, la, la. i don't hard, even know her name hard. So i can't it I think it's calling me on the fact that you're very impressed with her. I think it's kind of stunning that she has a lifelong political career. Yeah. And they're still doing news specials about how to pronounce her name. Yes. <laughs> After yes. she's already the vice president. Uh, and this woman, let's not forget, gentlemen, she came in and had her entire staff pretty much go on strike because she was such a menace yeah. as vice president. Yeah, like she's you know lost, what? Hey. She's lost a lot of people in her staff. Well, let me let me put the intro in here, Josh. And I know we're we're going oh, out. Oh, I'm sorry. To all the millions. No, it's cool, man. I just because people just tune in, they're like, who are these super handsome, intelligent guys talking? So I want to make sure they know this is episode 179, hello, of the Friends of Zeus podcast. And also it could be worse with Josh Perry. He's joining us, and we're gonna do a little swap cast action here. So we're doing a an emergency episode here. Uh, it's Saturday morning, the twenty seventh, and um, you know, we were just commenting that it's uh, one of the first times there's been coffee in this mug on this show, but there is this morning because it's morning time. But we just wanted to touch base and uh, go over this insanity that's going on with Kam Kamala Harris uh, and her anoint anointing her uh, coronation as the candidate on the on the party side of things because it's coming fast man i mean out the media the the push the propaganda i can't even keep up with it so i actually made a list of all the different things that they're doing it's like i'm up to like nine or ten i know i'm not even i don't even have a, a full list here but anyway we're just going to chat about that and uh kind of put our marker down with with what we're with what we're thinking um what do you before we even get into because I just have a bullet point list we can go through and uh, and use it to spin off. But what's your guys' impressions with what's been going on now? I guess Josh can go first because he's technically our guest today. Look, guys, I don't want you to be distracted by my Trump 2024 mug or 2020. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's that important. I'm stuttering here. But uh, uh, Kamala Harris, all right, she is the one sparkling light in the sky that can take us you know, where we could be unburdened by what has been. <laughs> yes. She is just phenomenal. And, you know, I appreciate someone that wants to go and start a meeting off with, you know, I am Vice President Kamala Harris and I am a black woman in a blue suit. You know, it's it's treasures like this where Joe Biden was starting to get 
he's been full on dementia, but it was almost starting to get sad, even with how much disdain I have for the guy and how much he has just been our country over a barrel and showed us the 50 states time and again. But now we have this fresh living meme in this woman who undoubtedly has no hope against Trump. Um, the only thing that scares me is we were that close. You're just a turn of the head from being in a Kamala Harris versus, uh, what was it, Nikki Haley, because she's the only candidate that didn't withdraw her uh, candidacy. Yeah, her delegates. Everyone else, yeah, everyone else, you know, withdrew their paperwork. So by election law, we were almost forced into the just staring the demise of our country in the face. Yeah, but with that, Tom, hey, that yeah, that's all I got on the matter for the open. <laughs> what you got, Tom? Yeah, no, that's good. And I love that neon sign behind you. Yeah, so do. thank you, right. sir. <laughs> and I love those mugs. I've seen those mugs. I, I've I'm so tempted to get one. I know but, where to get them. Um, I think we're all going to be relatively in agreement on Kamala. Although the one warning I'd give you, Josh, the last poll they did a poll like after she became the presumptive nominee and she's leading 44 to 42. So let's... Tom, you're, you're going to get me calling shenanigans and, and fouls all over the place, man. <laughs> I, I don't think, polls... I don't think four years ago was on the up and up buddy. That's just me. They had polls up like that before. And then the numbers were, were there. And just in the short, we all went to bed thinking one thing and woke up another. Isn't that I weird? think we're going to see some similar this time around, but I'm and sorry quickly, Tom. to address the polls. Yeah, they've been wonky for like the past year, starting with that first CNN poll that came out way back where they like overloaded it with Republicans. And even like up until like last week, if you look closely at the polls, they'd have Donald Trump leading. And then it, if you look at who was in the poll, <clears throat> it would be R plus four or mm -hmm. R plus six, which means four percent more Republicans. So they were like loading up the polls and uh, Trump was like winning in all these polls. And now this one, I don't know. I didn't look closely at, at this one yet. So that I'd R, imagine they're trying to, they're loading it the other way just to get Kamala off to a good start. So that R plus or D plus that has to do with the sample, right? Like it's how people self-identify. Is that the yeah. percentage? Yeah. I mean, there's the plus the minus for accuracy. That's gotcha. a different number. But if you look at who's in the poll, they give you that sometimes they'll too. tell you if they're, and they should know better. They should know, yeah. okay, we can't have, you know, more Republicans than Democrats in our poll because that's just going to be off. There was well, another poll like a week ago where they had, it said that Biden was leading, this was before Kamala took over uh, the coup, but Biden was leading amongst rural voters, if you can imagine that. So there's no way that was accurate. Yeah. So these polls, yeah, don't trust the polls, but I'm just telling you, so we don't really know where everybody's at, but I know there's a lot of Democrats out there. I know they're willing to pretty much vote for anybody, even a, a broomstick like uh, Biden was. And I know there's a lot of illegals that are getting registered to vote. So they're out there. They're not being sampled in these polls either. So the door is wide open. Anything could happen. Anything I, I'm can happen. Not going to sit back and say, because she is who she is, that she's not going to be able to win. She could still win, regardless yeah. of how dumb she is, how incompetent she is. I mean, look at the guy that won in 2020. So we're in trouble. Yeah, and I think it's important to have that attitude, Tom. I mean, like, and I didn't say this, but, you know, the only poll that matters is on November 5th, right? That's the only poll that, that carries any weight. Well, November 5th, 6th, 7th, as long as they yeah, keep counting. As a, from now until, like, December when you can vote, right. Um, again, I like I've said before on previous podcasts, I'm already up to like 30, 32 ballots I've been able to send in. So I'm doing my part and uh, I just expect everyone out there to to do their part. Now, uh, it's funny because we you mentioned the word coup and, um, you know, yeah, I wanted to bring that up, too. Yeah, I, I the thing that amazes me with this, you know, a few months ago, I took a picture of it, but there was a bumper. I live in a very blue area. And there was a bumper sticker, and it, it was in the font of the Biden-Harris campaign, and it said, settle for settle for Biden. Like, so, I mean, they were, <laughs> it wasn't a joke. Like, that's what that's the way they felt. 
and people I've talked to, they're sort of like what you guys said, like, uh, we'll take a broomstick, we'll take a ham sandwich. We don't care who it is as long as they have a D behind their name. So the thing is with voting, at least what I've heard and what I've seen over my incredibly short life, is people vote for things. They generally don't vote against things. Now, there are people that were like, I just, I got to vote for Trump because I can't have Hillary in there. And there's people like, I can't vote for Trump. I need to vote for Kamala Harris. That is a percentage. But in general, in politics, if you're motivated to vote for someone, that's much stronger as far as getting your ass out to the polls than it is to say, I don't want this person in. Because when it comes down to it, the former people tend to show up more than the latter. But anyway, there's a couple things going on. As you guys know, I love talking about the media. I love watching the media and what those little squirrely bastards are doing all the time. And I just came up with this list and we can go off on tangents. I'll read through it real quick first and then we can go back. But these are just points that have come up in the last week. OK, um, yeah, the unburdened by what has been. I, I think that should be the title for this episode. But anyway, we had uh, the uh, Mr. and Mr. Obama's uh, endorsement that came out this week. Um, which is like how that's news. I don't know. I mean, did anyone think that he wasn't going to? I guess people were still thinking Michelle was going to jump into this. But again, do you see this sort of fawning uh, reaction from the, the mainstream press when someone endorses Trump? They don't even mention it. They don't even mention it. But anyway. Um, well, everybody so, endorses Trump. Everyone and endorses was it, Trump. Uh, was it oh, so Obama or endorsed uh, Harris? Yes. The last I seen was just um, yesterday. Obama saying that it was a a news article. Obama says Harris can't defeat Trump. That that's the headline I see. As of yesterday, they did this whole dog and pony show where they had her on a video call accepting his endorsement. I mean, again, it was like, in like a parking lot or something. Yeah, on the phone. <laughs> but it's like behind me. The reason I have. The reason I have this background, <laughs> tell her I got it. <laughs> yeah, I got it. The reason I have this background is this is what we're living through right now. We have a party, the party, who it doesn't care about the voters. The last three elections, they have picked their own candidate, the cabal at the top. The voters haven't. Um, they kicked Bernie out in 2016. They kicked RFK out. They've kicked Biden out. Now they're now they're saying uh, Kamala is the is the nominee. No one's voted for this woman. So, and this is from the party that wants to save democracy. But anyway, that's why I got well, they're Mr. Also uh, aging Mao Zedong behind me. I'm sorry. They're they're also aging out though. You you got Biden, who's I mean, questions of his actual existence are oh, being yeah. called. Like, where has he but, been the last few days? And then they got to go and show a video of him getting off a plane or getting onto it. You got uh, Bernie. He was falling asleep at uh, Biden's inauguration. Um, RFK, he's up there in years. Uh, Hillary, she's done. I mean, outside of Kamala, Hakeem Jeffries, uh, who who's that guy that's always yeah, wearing the Lucy. bandana? Um, oh, uh, and, oh, geez, Harris. He's it, my Congress critter. He represents you, my. You area. know who I'm talking about, though, right? Yeah, Harris. Uh, not Harris. No, no it's not Harris. Raskin. Raskin, Jamie Raskin. Yeah, he's got his Kevin hair back now. Yeah, And then, Tom, you said Newsom. But, I mean, yeah, Newsom. Newsom, he's been losing the homeless fight, and that's been his platform for, what, the last 12 years yeah. that he's been in office? And it's always getting worse. He He's a failed governor from a failed state. But yeah. he did go toe-to-toe -to -toe with DeSantis in that debate. Um, it, he He's a slime ball that sounds good, but he spits nothing but lies and destruction. Yeah, he's a he's it's, a politician with a capital P. He's, like, from Central Casting, if you were doing a so, movie. But outside of them, the only one that the public, I feel, would actually get behind would be Tulsi Gabbard. And yeah, I hear everybody say, I like Tulsi. I like Tulsi. That woman is a lifelong Democrat. Yeah. Right, has voted the party line forever. And uh, what was, I think the Hodge twins years ago, they said uh, the best interpretation I could get is she's a psycho leftist, but you can have a conversation with her. And if that's all you get from the Democrats... Why is anybody even thinking anybody besides this man is going to win? I, I don't understand the pony I, show, gentlemen. Hey, from your lips to God's ears, Josh, I hope that's the case. And again, I know we live in different places. Around here, everyone's like, Harris is fantastic. And everyone hates Trump here. I mean, D.C., 97% really? voted for Biden in the last election. 97% of this town. So it's the people I run into are not the people you're running. I mean, we're 
You know what I'm saying? They're like different mentality. So I'm sure we have different views. That's why I'm like, Tom and I are like, still like stressed out, I think, because a lot of people we See, run into aren't as you that guys way. should be, though. Be, yeah. When I, I, I want to uh, mention this in a video, it had to be around a month ago, but I, I never met this guy in my life. Um, I was just, you know, working next to him uh, randomly for uh, like 20 minutes. 10 minutes and we didn't say a word to each other. He just looks at me and says, are you getting ready for world war three? <laughs> this is what normal conversation has yeah. become among people. Uh, people out here are, we're ready to start rallying, you know, and I ain't talking, going and publicly assembling. We're yeah. ready to start getting, old school, getting it on. like or something that happened in the late 1700s. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? <laughs> like yeah. it's craziness. And the thing is, there's a lot of, and maybe we're contributing to it with our podcast, but there's a lot of like whirlwind hype up going. But let me jump back to my list here, and then we'll come back and dig down. We got the Sorry. Obama endorsement. No, that's cool. We got so yeah. I'm trying to keep it a little short because I gotta I gotta be off by like ten. Um, gotcha. So we got the Obama endorsement. We got the whole media prepping everyone. Uh, anyone that says anything bad about Harris is a racist and a sexist. We've got the talking point sheet that went out in D.C. Uh, earlier this week that was found uh, like all the major networks and the newspapers were parroting what was in the sheet that was handed out by the Harris um, Harris campaign, which shows just a direct connection of that's why they're all in lockstep. They just put out the thing. They've got the media in their back pocket. The party does. This whole borders Operation are. Operation Mockingbird on full display. Yeah, yeah. This whole. Borders are gaslighting we're going through right now. There's videos online you can look at where two or three years ago, everybody, all your favorite talking heads are calling her the borders are. And now they're saying, well, that was incorrect reporting or she, you know, Republicans are saying she was the borders are. And my question is, what's so bad about being the borders are then, everybody? Like, let's dig down like one centimeter into this. Like, why are they running the away from it? Right. And so they're acknowledging it by saying she wasn't. <laughs> Then we've got the uh, Hamas attacks at Union Station here in D.C. I don't know how much national news that made, but that was freaking bananas. Tearing down the U.S. flag, when putting did, up the Palestinian flag at Union Station downtown in D.C. Uh, about two days ago. When did ago. this happen? Like two days, two ago? days ago. Yeah, man, they were like dragging a Capitol Police officer across the ground. They burned, they pulled down American flags at Union Station and burned them and put up Palestinian flags in the place. Violence spray painted Hamas is coming. Yeah, on the statues and really? stuff down there. Yeah, total banana stuff. No one arrested. No one arrested. No, no, no. Well, there were like 20 arrests. Oh, okay. My bad. We just got fact checked. I don't know. Was, was it catch and release though? Probably. Is that what Probably. you guys run out there? Yep. Then we've got the Minnesota Freedom Fund, which uh during the summer of love in 2020, when everybody was getting bailed out by the Minnesota Freedom Fund uh, after the George Floyd riots. Kamala Harris was full-throated endorsing that on Twitter. You can still go. The, the tweet is still alive. Anyway, they're denying that. They're, they're saying that's fake news, that she never contributed to it. Again, they're trying to parse <laughs> things like she was supported. She was telling people to contribute to it. Anyway, you've got the hey. GovTrack, the independent, nonpartisan, nonpartisan uh, agency um that tracks like how liberal or conservative different Congress critters are. And she, they ranked her the most uh, liberal or I think second only to Bernie Sanders. No, and, she was number one. Or maybe she was number one. And now in the, number last, one. in the last week, GovTrack has taken that page down. You can't access it anymore. Right. Of course, people screen grabbed it, but they, this independent nonpartisan organization, you can't find it on their website anymore. Mm. This whole selling of her as a, as a moderate, which is just mind blowing. Um, but anyway, that's just off the top of my head, guys. I mean, I made like this little list. I mean, there's more than that. It is a full on fire hose of propaganda from every single direction that people are being exposed to right now. The question is, one, they're desperate. The question is, do people buy it? I think there's a lot of people, my personal opinion is there's a lot of people that hate Trump and they were going to vote for Biden. And again, they're going to vote for the ham sandwich and that's fine. And I think they're going to have a week or two of excitement. But I don't see how the Harris campaign has any legs in this. I don't see like two or three weeks out. I think I said on a past past podcast. I mean, reality has a funny way of, you know, coming out, right? You know, it does. you, you get the hype. I just don't see how they can. She's, she's a horrible, 
horrible candidate. She's literally never gotten a vote for president before. She's never gotten a delegate, even though she ran. She she left before Iowa in 2020. But anyway, that's the points I wanted to get out. A lot of stuff to research. I mean, we could probably do six hours on this. But where are you guys? What are you guys thinking? You go ahead, Tom, because I got so much to say. All right. <laughs> Couple of things. One more piece of propaganda that I noticed was the the bullet slash shrapnel propaganda. Yeah. And I think they're doing this. They want to say it wasn't a bullet because Trump wants to say he took a bullet for democracy. Yeah. They don't want him to be able to say that. So they, they're trying to change it to say that's not a bullet. That was shrapnel. Yeah. I don't know. Is how that why I'm seeing like frame by frame breakdowns on Twitter of the bullet and Trump yes. talking? Is that why? Okay. Fuck that crazy. Thing. And they don't want him to be able to say that he took a bullet for democracy. So they want to change it to shrapnel, which... It's and ridiculous. that started that, that started right away, Tom, not to interrupt, but that started right away. I mean, I remember within an hour of this happening, I was watching Wolf Blitz on uh, CNN at the beach house. And he was like, we've been hearing what could be firecrackers out here. Like we don't like they were minimizing it <laughs> in the moment they were minimizing it. Yeah, anyway, it was like sorry. Trump leaves stage due to loud noises. Yeah. So Trump falls that was the down. headline. Trump falls down at rally is helped off stage by Secret Service. That was <laughs> I'm not kidding. That was <laughs> I never saw that. Anyway. But hey, you okay. know, with that. Oh, I'm sorry, Tom. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was gonna go into the commercial. So speaking yes. of more propaganda, so she came out with this commercial. Yes, I don't know if you've seen it, Josh. It's the one with the Beyonce song in the background singing about freedom. It's a nice, like slick commercial. But the points uh, I wanted I have to not. Okay, well, you'll probably see it eventually. It's being saturated through the media. But she says, you know, some people, and she doesn't, you know, they're very they're they're like lawyers on that side. They're very particular about how they say things, but they allude to things and they plant things in your mind. So she says some people want chaos, fear, and hate, you know, and then she puts up a picture of Trump while she's saying this. And then she says, other people, we choose freedom. Now, okay, let's break that down. Chaos, fear, and hate. So chaos, do you remember the border? Was there any chaos there? Was there any crisis? <laughs> people just like millions of people just charging across the board, beating the border patrol guards, the whole thing with the whips, it, which was a lie, just fentanyl. Get a beat by people. a horseback monster patrolman, just <laughs> whipping those poor illegals. <laughs> you know, and people with ladders fighting the border patrol. There was chaos. So, and she wanted that. That's what the Democrats want is the chaos at the board. Fear. You talk about fear, fear mongering about democracy. And if you vote for Trump, it's going to be the end of democracy. You talk Hitler. about the riots and supporting the rioters and bailing them out because riots create fear. It's a tactic used by Marxist, uh, you know. For decades, they've been using that tactic. They stoke fear as a way to control the rest of the populace. Hate. Um, what we saw the other day with Palestine. If you're supporting Hamas in Palestine, even by just not coming out, she didn't show up at the Netanyahu speech. Oh, yeah. She stayed away from that. She shook his hand later that night and smiled at him. Not enough. I mean, she should have mm -hmm. been there for the speech. But if you're supporting Palestine and Hamas by default, you're pushing for a hate. So all of these things she's like trying to pin on the Republicans. But these are things that are really tenants of what she's been representing for the past, you know, three and a half years with the Biden administration. Yeah, 100 uh, percent. Let's look a little deeper than the last three Here's Kamala Harris okay. has been a dedicated defender to locking up and imprisoning people for no reason or blowing up their charges because it looks good on her record. All the while letting select groups of people, I won't say it for terms of service sake, but they like they like, you know, like Trump said about Mr. Epstein, you know, like him young. And she would let a lot of those people off. And it shows in her record. This woman is a monster and she needs this whole rebranding like i haven't seen the commercial with uh, you know beyonce but i see the one where it's you know with 
your donation of ten dollars it goes a long way to going and fighting Donald Trump, who said he'll be a dictator on day one. Yeah. And you know, it's like <laughs> everybody is seen at this point. They're just playing to the base of the uh, the people that would wear their mask from after it was officially announced the pandemic's over and still have it on by themselves in their car. Mm -hmm. That's who they're appealing to. And then they're also trying to catch all the individuals that want to play, you know, immutable characteristics in their politics. It's, this is a woman of color, you know, look at her go. And I see what, what gets me is the people that aren't paid influencers that want to go and regurgitate all yeah. this, you know, I don't, is it lockstep? Is it Mockingbird? There's just so many deep state operations that we see thrown at us now because of media like this. And, you know, hey, Mike, we might not be getting the millions yet, but my Lord, there will come a day where this will get more than CNN, MSNBC, because not only are they just hemorrhaging views left and right, they're they're just... They're losing. Yeah. The, at a base level, they have lost to alternative media and yeah. it shows. Yeah. And then there is not a damn thing that Kamala, hey, what, what's her middle name? I don't know. Good question. Nah, we'll, it's we'll just, Indian. We'll I know say it's toe. Good old Camel Toe Harris. It's, I know it's an Indian name. I know that because she's part, she's half Indian, half Jamaican. And I can't, it's yeah, four letters. Nikki Haley had a very, very, uh, syllable friendly name i didn't know that mm -hmm. harris did too yeah i mean it's you know i look back and i'm not the one that i mean someone i was listening to someone that had this point i just don't want to take a lot of stuff i say on here i don't want to take credit for it personally there's take a lot the of credit stuff, damn it I'm take saying the credit let's hear probably it. like 25 percent of what i say on this episode is original thoughts by me 75 percent i'm probably regurgitating from shit i heard from some guy like whatever comedian said this he was like you know, 99% of what you know is just something some good dude told you, you know, <laughs> which is kind of true. But anyway, you look back. Even Andrew Tate, in, you are the sum of your last five influences. Pretty much. Yeah. The, I mean, yeah. yeah. So back like two years ago, uh, Xi in Russia, they had this big like uh, Congress, you know, where, like I think every 10 years, the Communist Party has this this Congress thing where they come together and they say what they want to do for the next 10 years. And. A miss, you know, a lot of people think everyone in China is a member of the party. That's not correct. It's actually like 15, 20 percent, I think. The, most of them aren't, excuse me, official members of the party. So the party comes together and they had Xi sitting there as the president. And next to him, they had this guy. His name is Hu Jintao. He was the former president. And before the whole thing started, these guards come over and they grab Hu Jintao in front of everyone. I mean, this was done on purpose. They force him out of his seat and walk him out, you know, out of the building. He hasn't been heard of from since. He hasn't had any appearances. No one knows where he is. And I'm saying what we're seeing right now is very similar to that, where we have Biden, who is the the Hu Jintao, and he uh, is no longer usable <laughs> by the party. And he's gone, man. Like, I mean, seriously, you talk about a week later, this guy was probably the most talked about person on the planet. We're seven Sharp days attack. later. And now it's like you there's nothing. You can probably do a Lexus Nexus search and not even find Biden on there. Like he's he's yesterday's potato salad. I mean, now it's all Harris, 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 Harris. And I just that that parallel between this top down party decision, this cabal that says 
we're going to take this guy here because he's a puppet. He's a meat suit. He's a figurehead. We're removing him. Here is your new ice cream flavor, America. This is this person here is now in charge when really the reality is the people behind the curtain, the cabal is in charge, you know, and it's so transparent and people don't Well, something see it. on your list, something Yeah. on your list was talking about the cards, the the talking point cards. You Yeah. you you think Joe Biden's the only one getting those things? No, Kamala Harris is going to be saying, "Oh, let's skip the or repeat the line." Yeah, You know, repeat she them. she's going to be doing that same thing. She's going to have her list of faces and names next to it, saying, "I can call these reporters, ignore these ones." It's going to be the same old show. Only Yeah. instead of having, uh, 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 we're going to have <laughs> every time she laughs. Wow, that's You know, awesome. it's That's our intro yeah, idea. Real quick, every on that time. point, I, I don't want to interrupt your monologue, No, no, go Michael. ahead. <laughs> no, I'm Did good. you guys see, it was about a week ago, Biden was having like a staff meeting or something. And he was getting, you know, real angry, as you do with dementia. And somebody handed him a note. And the note said, try to be positive. You're being too defensive. He read the note out loud in front of everybody. <laughs> oh, They handed when was him this? a note and he's like, try to be positive. <laughs> <laughs> You're being too oh, defensive. when was this? that's my Like president, recently, guys. like a week ago. You didn't hear that? That's my president. I mean, <laughs> the, the thing oh, that's my sad God. is with Biden and I'm speaking as a as a free liberty loving American, right, who who loves my country, family, God, all that stuff. It pisses me off that the party has allowed by by doing this whole thing with Biden over the last three years, they have totally lowered the bar of what it means to be president. We want our president, and I'm going to use the the male. I know women can be president, but we want them to be a statesman. We want them to be a leader, and a leader is someone that's not looking at polls and not looking at spin. They're the people that have the intestinal fortitude and bravery to state what needs to be done in the face of the majority of people saying no. And Biden wasn't that person. Kamala is not that person. Trump has had been like that his entire life. Trump doesn't give a shit what anyone else thinks. He's going to tell you what he thinks. He's a statesman. Benjamin Net not Netanyahu is a statesman. You know, that speech he gave in front of Congress, he's going in there. He's not He's not worried about how this is going to affect his likability score and all that shit. He's just like saying he's given the truth, man, from his perspective. And he's a leader. And the fact is, we've had three years where we have not had that in this country. And if Trump came in and it was just 10 percent of his personality, people are going to be like, oh, my God, this is Hitler. This guy's an authoritarian. You know, they're going to think he's being like a strong man or something like that. I'm like. We want a leader in this country. We want an Eisenhower. We want a Reagan. We want somebody that can lead, right? And not just watch polls and be a figurehead. I'd really like to know who the hell is running this country right now. As a citizen, I don't know who they are. There's people making decisions. I don't even know what their names are. Yeah, who's writing the speeches that go into these teleprompters? Because Who Kamala, knows? Kamala's not writing any of those. Anything she's saying, there's no way she's writing that. She Tell doesn't you what, have James the ability. O'Keefe, James O'Keefe has been going DC, you know, office to DC office, exposing all this stuff for months. He's doing a great job. Why, if you guys got time, I got to catch watch up some with of him. O'Keefe Media Group. Oh yeah, watch some of the older ones. Um, like OMG. they, he gets uh somebody sneaking around on the IRS, and that he gets them to openly admit, yeah, you know, we go and uh, we'll we'll throw fines at NFL teams because it's a quick, easy couple million. You know, and he said, "Oh yeah, we don't care about the you know average average person. We'll just go and break or you know jack up their taxes either way because it don't matter. Yeah, Like it's a they game. they are up to some criminal stuff over there. It's a game And to them. and when it comes to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, though, and you know the pair of them, it, it's only fitting that they have ascended to the peak of political power because." It, it makes me feel good as a dad because then when I tell my kids, like, you can really be anything. We got a crook in there, a dead, a, a corpse Yeah. and a crook right now. And then we got Kamala Harris, who literally slept her way to the top. Like, there is there, so many people coming out and saying that, 
But then you got some woman making up a story about Donald Trump, about how he went and uh, groped her in a dressing room, whatever it is, gets his little case in New York. And it's like the contrast. Yeah. That's what that's what's flabbergasting to me. And anybody that still chooses to vote blue, no matter who, they don't want to come to terms with what actual reality is. They mm-hmm. like their bubble. They're going to stay in their bubble. Well, here, I mean, like before the show started, Josh, and we were joking, but here's how would you answer this? Because there are people, and again, I love human beings. I love people. I think humans are awesome. We can do so much. People climb mountains, people jump out of airplanes, people are soldiers, people can like be- beat computers at chess. What a, human beings are amazing. So I like people, and there's people that I like out there that think I'm insane for having the the views I do. So how what what's your what's your response to people that are like, I'm not the crazy person. You're the crazy person. Like, I mean, isn't that kind of weird how we're in this alternate reality with like half the population in this country? Because I'm telling you, you will find a podcast out there where there's three dudes sitting around being like, I don't understand these people that are like a cult. Like they just love Trump no matter what. Like I mean I try to explain it to them. I mean, isn't that a weird dynamic that we're in right now? I'm not saying they're correct, but that's our fellow citizen out there right now. There's people that believe that. Well, well, it's really come down to, do you go and, and just, you know, it's the old saying of, you know, hey, a wolf doesn't ask a sheep what they want for dinner. You know, they yeah. it just is what it is. Right. And, and with, with everybody that's so hellbent on voting in the socialist communism that has enshrouded the great American country that you can't reason with them at this point. And they're going to go and do what they do, which is normally nothing productive for society. A lot of name calling and wanting free shit. That's, that's who the Democrats appeal to now. People but, that want to get your tax dollars so that they don't have to go and earn their own and they can just get whatever. That's why there's videos where people are saying, I make 3000 a month in child or food stamps for all my kids. And it's like the regular people can't do that. We right. just go and have to work our asses off and it goes out of our pocket. But if you're solely dependent on the government, that's that's their demographic, man. And you can't wake them up because when you go and take away – the the D from the uh, the office, then all of a sudden you get stuck with them not getting as much. They are trying. That's how they make their make their life, man. Well, you, I don't even know if I want to say living, but that's how they get by. But Go you know, ahead, I'm sorry. You know, I'm glad we. Act, this is a great point, Josh, because I didn't even, I didn't think of it. I didn't think of it that way. I run into people. Most of the people who are, what I would call true believers of the party um you know what we would call like the 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 white liberal suburban women or whatever the people that i see a lot that espouse this are well off they're driving bmws they're shopping at you know tyson's corner they're like going to nice stores these are not people that are they're dependent on the government, not for a handout. They're dependent on the government for their living because they're working for an affiliated company that works for the federal government. They're lobbyists, they're politicians, they work for contractors that do work. So these are people that are making some bank, you know, and they are supporting the machine because it's good for them, not from a handout standpoint. I guess it's white collar welfare, right? It's not food stamps. But I'm saying that is that is the person that that is the level of people that are running shit right now. The people that are collecting like food stamps or whatever, and God bless them, whatever. I mean, people that they're not making decisions. They're followers. The people in the party that are running shit. They're the ones that are gaining power from this arrangement. They're gaining an immense amount of money from this from this relationship that they have, you know, with the with the power brokers. I think the left is made up of two components. There's the brainwashed 
that are they go to the schools and the colleges they soak in all of this stuff about you know republicans are fascists and uh racist and all white people are racist and all of this stuff that they just kind of soak in there's the brainwashed and then there's the brainwashers which are the ones you're talking about mike the white I'm whole dude if i was in a goss if i was in a church <laughs> i'd be like praise jesus the, the rich you are preaching elite it. that are they're saying all the same things but they don't believe it. they know it's not true yes. but they're putting it out there that's the shit the other people are, are taking it in while at the same time it's the george orwell 1984 thing where war is peace peace is war and they turn around and point at us and say well those guys are brainwashed yeah well they know that they're perperpetrating this brainwashing on their own people on their own population on their oh, own students God. that are across the country you're well they're Tom. heavily indoctrinated heavily yeah. and the, with the the people that you guys are talking about i i believe that they're indoctrinated in the sense uh, and this is on top of everything where it's i have to portray myself in a certain way it's you know this like saying that you know kamal Harris, she's going to be this this great woman that just goes and provides and does all these good things. And I want to get behind that because that makes me feel good as a person too. Cause look at what I'm Mormon going fuzzy. and espousing to the world. Yeah. It's, Hey, look how progressive we are. We elected the most, per, the most liberal politician in history. That's also a woman of color. It's look at what we're doing. And I think that's, that falls into it as well. It's kind of like when you see somebody that can't live in their means and they're there it's like driving a lambo in the hood you yeah. know yeah it, that that's kind of it's kind of what we got now yeah and you know it's funny i don't it's like uh, let me as a as a comparison like illegal immigration and i i've said this for years i don't have i mean a little beef little tiny beef but i really don't have a beef with the actual people that are coming here illegally because if Michael was living in El Salvador and I was 20 years old and I was like, man, I'm living in a shithole and there's this place I can walk to that is like, and I'm watching these movies. I'm like, I mean, it's a rational decision to be like, I'm going there. Like, I get that. I don't hate those people. The people I hate are the ones in DC and the people, the powers that be that are like doing this, creating the, the situation and the facilitators. So it's almost the same thing with the party. Where the people that are like, I'm going to get mine, I'm going to get my Obama phone, I'm going to get, I don't like them. I think it's, I think they've got some stuff to work on. I don't hate them. The ones I hate are the ones that, like Tom said, know exactly what they're doing and they're manipulating uh, this population uh, in exchange for, for power for themselves. Those are the people that deserve our real disdain, but those people pit people like me they try to pit people like me against people who are right. in the bad circumstance and then start calling me names or whatever i'm like no i don't i've got nothing but love for those people man like i feel bad for them it's you i think is an ass you know that i think is an asshole you know what i mean but they don't want to have that conversation see i blame a lot of them both both of those groups I the people come fair. here i'm it's not fair. i'm not okay with that because you know what if if there's a problem in America, yeah, where are we going to run to? Where no, you're do we right, have? Josh. I got you. We have nothing. Yeah, you know, it, it comes to a certain point. Certainly and that's not Canada. Make, that's the biggest part of our history. The the revolution. We said no more, and we made it our own, and that's it. Everybody else are just that past the next guy. And everybody welcoming them, welcoming these people over. Let, let's not forget just. Because it's been happening so much, it we get out that that short term memory, and that there's still kids being trafficked. You go and can look up the videos anytime of people going up to the TSA saying, "Hey, what the heck's going on with this?" They're like, "Yeah, hey, this is normal. Forty kids with two adults. It's just what happens. Happens every day." Yeah. And the people coming over the walls, they're going and cutting the beams of the, the wall that is built. They're going and they're they're doing. They're just flocking to the border patrol by the thousands, and they are they aren't coming here for asylum. There ain't no way that oh, anyone no. can ever convince me. There, no, uh, and it's a fair and point. It's the, a it's a huge spectrum of people. I mean, that's well, a fair point. Well, Kamala goes and says, "Do not come." 
But then you got Joe Biden and her saying, hey, come on, caravans, as their president and vice president elect, come on, I'm coming. You just keep on moving. It's okay. I'm, and now we're, we're stuck with this because it doesn't just fix itself. And when, when during the agenda 47, when Trump's talking about the biggest mass deportation, I mean, it, he's going to have local police doing it, but we got, we got video after video of the local police not at their best on a mm-hmm. daily basis. The FBI raiding people's houses. You're just starting to see people get out of jail for January 6th. Yeah. And there's still jackasses like Destiny out there arguing, saying that that was an insurrection. Yeah. And they just did one this week. Well, this is craziness. And how long does it have to go on for, gentlemen? Yeah. No, I, you're. I, I get it. It, it. And it's a it's a huge spectrum of people and it's it's i guess my thing is the way i'm looking at this from solving it attacking the people and that's the wrong word for it going after the people that are coming here and i'm all for deportation don't get me wrong but that doesn't solve the issue we need to go after the people that are facilitating it because they're the ones that are running the machinery that are allowing this to happen and people act like We've never had deportation here before. And then I don't know. I mean, this is what's the idea of like, OK, all this bad stuff happens. You're here and uh, we can't deport you. Of course we can deport you. I mean, it's easy come, easy go, man. I mean, that's I don't know. I, I don't understand why people have a moral issue with that. There's really two don't. types of people, I think. I th- I've thought about this a lot. When you talked about El Salvador, what would you do if you were there? Yeah. If you've ever watched this show Survivor, you know, they put <laughs> 20 people on a beach. Half of them are going to work really hard to build that shelter to make the place nice. The mm. other half are just, you know, drinking out of coconuts, <laughs> lazing around. <laughs> yeah. They're different types of people. And I like yeah. to think that if I was in El Salvador and if there was enough people that that had the same idea like me, we wouldn't leave, you know, we'd be, I'd mm. be like, okay, let's, you know, let's fix this place up. Let's make it nice. Let's, you know, That's a good point, change Tom. everything. We're going to start some construction, get some businesses going. It's going to be a paradise, you know, in a few years. That would be my, not to run from it. Like the people in Afghanistan, when the Taliban came in, they just took off running, dropped their guns and ran, as opposed to the people in Ukraine, when the Russians came in, they didn't run, they stood and, they picked up their they guns. They didn't have much no, of that's, choice, so. Different types of people. And it's a matter of, you know, which one are you? And unfortunately, all these people that are running from their problems are and runners. coming here are, runners. These are not the people we want. Look, I look, and nothing's absolute, right? I mean, there's always going to be people that are in the cracks or whatever. But that's a great point, Tom. And I, I hadn't I hadn't thought of it that way. I think though. At the same time, to be fair to some of these people, it they are in a what they view as a hopeless situation. I mean, how much are you going to fight City Hall if you're like a 16 year old dude that's like in El Salvador and you got gangs running around and you know that the government's corrupt and you're smart and you're a self starter? I mean, I think it would be rational to go someplace that rewards self starters. Equalizer, man. Equalizer. No, but you still need people with you. You know, you can't do it by yourself. Hey, I'm just one saying. of my favorite lines from a movie was a uh, dark night when the Joker's talking and he says, you know why I like uh, bullets and gunpowder? Because it's cheap. Yeah. It, right there. Uh, it's all cheap, man. And it's all easy to do. Yeah. They, they could go and make change. Let's be real. The El Salvadorian uh, army mm-hmm. would not be like the United States Army going and kicking in your neighborhood. Yeah, it would be no. a vast difference. Yeah, they're not. But trained. they could go and yeah. make their place better. It's not always on America to pick up the slack for the rest of the world. And, you know, that's another thing. Like, Harris is getting ready to double down with NATO. Biden already doubled down with them. And she's ready to keep it going and keep giving them more and more money. It's not our problem. We honestly inherited so many issues from all these places. At this point, it's like, man... It, do you want your people back or your money? Because we're going to handle yeah. the situation either way. Well, one thing about El Salvador. I, I mean, I don't, I don't get it. Just since we're talking about it specifically, and I know we're, I was just using that as a ran, random example, but, you know, in the last year, 
the young guy that was elected president of El Salvador, a lot, you know, a lot of people are like, he's, he's like ultra left. He's this, like, he, he's kind of, he's so young. He hasn't been around. No one really knows who this guy really is, but he's been locking up cartel members and gang members, like by the tens of thousands, like they've been building prisons. And just over the last like 12 months to 14 months, the crime rate in El Salvador has gone like, wow. A lot of people don't talk about it up here, but that is, is one, one Trump country. Keeps alluding to that he's shipping yes. his criminals up here. Yeah, well, we got a lot. Of no, I don't criminals. think it's that's him. why the crime rate's dropping. And, and what then, I'm saying it, is he's locking up. To your point, Josh, I'm saying there is one dude that's like trying. He is trying to crack down and like, and he's in prison tens of thousands of people. And there's people as in this should. country that are like, that's so horrible. He's being so bad. And I'm like, you kind of have to do that. It's unpleasant, but you kind of have to do that if you want to take your country back. And as far as that's concerned, I'm glad that he's taking care of his country. But honestly, it's not America, and I really don't care. The only time where yeah. El Salvador really interests me in the last few years was when they switched from the U.S. dollar as mm. their currency and instead went on the Bitcoin standard. Yeah, that's, that's when point. El Salvador can go and kick rocks, in my opinion. Yeah. The fact that he's going and looking out for his own country, as he should. I I'm concerned about uh that dude. What was it, Venezuela or Argentina? Maduro? Where you, you know, was saying Afuela this, Afuela that. I love that guy, but he also went and did pulled a couple curveballs out. He did a lot of good, but then he did a lot of left leaning stuff too. He was supposed to like fully back America. No. Nah. And it, what's another one that's going and uh, making a lot of problems? I mean, I, I'm sorry, boys. Yeah, it's I'm getting complicated. Here. No, no, you're no. It, <laughs> there's yeah, just there's so no, many. It's not up to the United States to run the entire world. It's up to the United States to defend but and we take do. care of the United States. I know we do, but we do it under the idea that we're doing it for us. It's for our own protection. It's for our own interests. Well, even, which is fine. He, okay. So we got Harris. She will never get out of the globalist reach. But even no. no matter what we do, Trump's is still going with it. Like talking about good old my boy BB Netanyahu. He mm -hmm. wouldn't stop by and seeing Trump first. Yeah. Like, and and Trump saying, hey, you know, you, just so you know, this is the closest we've ever been to World War Three because he says it every time he does anything because it's true. And what gets me is BB ain't helping matters neither. Now, I'm not saying Hamas is good. But I'm saying rather than just constantly drop bombs and then have good old Biden lie saying we're not giving 2,000 pound bombs. Well, you take enough 500 pound bombs. I don't know math too good, but I think four might go and equal out to a 2K. But he needs to go and try being peaceful, too. I don't understand why everybody's just so committed. I'm murdering everybody. Where's mm. this came from? Hmm. What will ever happen to being peaceful? <laughs> I'm sorry, boys. I'm the Middle East. No, it, it always has been. Well, That's and I don't mean, new. and I don't mean to jump, but I do have to get moving. And I, this was a fantastic episode, by by the way, in my opinion. I'm sorry, I get red. We were supposed no, to be talking Josh, about Josh. This is fantastic. About cable tail cackles. No, this is fantastic. I get for me, and we'll all go through and wrap up. For me, the wrap up point is what my the whole impetus that I wanted to do this episode is. I want people to open their eyes. I want people to look at what they are being, uh, what they're being told, what the media is doing, how they're couching things, who's really running stuff. People right now, you have the party using the media to run herd on the population. That's what's going on right now in real time, just over the last week with these stories. And there's people that see it, I would say like us. I'm not saying we're super enlightened, but we see it. And there's people that aren't paying attention and they're just picking it up kind of hydroponically, you know, and it's having an effect. And to Tom's point, you know, polls are polls, but you can't stop fighting. You, you, you have to push back. You have to open your mouth. You have to do, have the unpleasant conversations with people that you know or your work guy or whatever, the guy that you work with. I'm not saying you get in people's faces, but if people just say something, you can't just let it stand. You have to try to show your fellow citizens uh, a better path. I mean, that's my opinion. I mean, that's why I like this podcast. 
But anyway, what do you guys have to say? To I'll give you the up? last word, Josh. Um, I'm just going to oh, say take thanks, away, Tom. Mike, for, for waking up this morning with your... <laughs> yeah, it seemed like you had like a morning wood about yeah. Kamala. You just couldn't... <laughs> You had to like get it Guilty addressed. Guilty charged, and, yeah. So I'm just glad we could be here for you. We I think we acted as a sounding board for for you this morning. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, guys. Really but Josh, good. you you get the last word, fellas. I just want to say thank you for having me. We're going <laughs> we're going to leave there with that. I, I love every interaction I have with you guys. Fine group of people. All right, not on both sides. It's just your side. And <laughs> Kamala Harris <laughs> is my north star. That yes. woman, everything she goes and points to is somehow related to death and destruction. But to be fair, in her defense, she is normally baked most of the time. And she talks to everybody like we're two. She yeah. talks to us like we're dumber than my children. My children, you know what? I love them. And they're they're all very bright, but they make a lot of bad choices. And she literally sounds like somebody that I would pick them up from at a daycare. Mm -hmm. and i think my kids could give a better speech than she could because she goes and says i'm in my blue suit uh, that right there just josh's for kids me. for president 2024. man and i am just ranting again mike thank you tom yeah. thank you all right guys you're With here that, i'm out take care guys Cool, man. Thank you, Zeus. All right. Take take care. See you, buddy. See you.